Anybody else? I have stuff I can throw in, but I want anybody who wants to have say. Semantics are often like the way the state controls us. For example, people associate anarchy, which just means without rulers, as chaos and death and destruction. And that's why we use new terms like agorism, voluntarism, to try and better express what we're getting across. Can you speak to uh, better expressing the message and using language to our advantage and not the language they define? Yeah, he's talking about how semantics are used by um, the control freaks. Most people call them government, I call them the control freaks, because that's what they are. Um, how they use semantics and terminology to basically demonize freedom. And a, the big example is anarchy. It means no ruling class. It also means chaos and mayhem. And how convenient for them that the same word is used to mean both. In other words, if you're free, you'll all kill each other. That's the implied message that they don't even have to say. It's built into the language as it's used. And so there are a lot of other terms like voluntarianists, which is a lot more pleasant sounding. Mostly people haven't heard of it and they go, what's that? And you say, I want everyone to interact voluntarily. And everyone says, oh, cool, me too. None of them mean it because they haven't thought about the fact that what they do by way of their political ideas is advocate aggression against everyone they've ever met and everyone they haven't. So voluntarism is a, a nice term for it. There's a reason I use anarchism pretty often, which is I totally, voluntarism is more specific. Um, and it, in some ways, it's more accurate. There's a reason that I still use the term anarchist and anarchism, because I find that often, no matter how nicely and politely you lead people to the context of a, to the concept of a voluntary society, eventually they get to, you mean no government? <laughs> and they freak out. So I just skip all that and make them freak out in the first sentence. <laughs> yes, I mean no government. <laughs> and then get into why no government, A, is the only moral choice, and B, is the only choice. Because government isn't real. You can either be deluded and hallucinate a magical entity called government, which you hope will fix society and will always make things worse, or you can accept that every person owns himself and lives. Live your life accordingly. Um, and I know some people would rather do it politely and, and use the less scary-sounding terms. And, you know, that works on people outstanding. I prefer the bludgeoning over the head. <laughs> For all its faults, government does do things. So some of it is always laudable. For example, we're, we, the government, is spending $2.2 trillion on the welfare state. Now there's a problem. The problem that they're solving is seniors eating dog food, $20,000 prescription bills, and things like that. If you're going to get rid of the state, you should have some suggestion of what you're going to replace it with. So what are you going to do for these thousands of seniors who are depending upon you and everything like that? How do you sell that? Okay, the question is, all these things the government does, this, um, allegedly useful, like taking care of poor people and, and all that, the question is, without the state, what are you going to do um, for those people? And there's a very specific reason my answer is absolutely nothing. I am going to do nothing about that. And I usually follow that up by, we have been trained to think in terms of a centralized, authoritarian, forcibly imposed solution to everything. What about the poor? You say the poor, you mean however many million people who are down their luck. Right now, including me. <laughs> and so people think in terms of how, what gigantic centralized solution will deal with the poor. No, but the question of what do you do when the state disappears implies that I'm going to give a centralized answer because I don't really have the money. I want a centralized answer. I want a real answer. Here's the, well, the real answer is, I noticed how you worded it, which is how everybody words it. What are you going to do? Which is why the first part of my answer is nothing. If I'm really rich, I might help a few people I know. The question is, when people ask me that, is I say, well, what are you going to do? Because yeah. you have just as much power as I do, and if 100 million or 300 million people thought, well, what am I going to do? Because if each one of them helps somebody, it's a lot easier than having one guy try to stand up and say, here's my solution to solve poverty for the world. 
But that doesn't fit into the template of the way most people think. Most people think, I want to hear your plan, which right. means a government plan, and you didn't say government plan. Correct. Right. So what's your plan? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. See what seniors eating dog food. <laughs> See, that's, that's the implication that, that comes from a status point of view. And I know you're sort of don't want to be nasty to you. Um, Go for it. The, the status <laughs> point of view. I can stand up. The status point of view, and there's a, I wish I remembered it, there's a great Lysander <coughs> Spooner quote um, about when the, when the collectivists, they confuse society with the state and say, when we say we don't want the state doing something, they think we don't want anybody doing it. Right. Like, if you don't want the state paying, feeding the poor, you must want the poor to starve. Right. And it really, the, the, the authoritarians have a huge advantage because they can propose violent, centralized solutions. We're going to forcibly rob the rich and give it to the poor. I can't do that because I don't own you. I can't force you to do, I don't have the right to force you to do anything. All I can do is say, look back at history and see which works better. These great forcibly imposed centralized solutions like, wow, the Soviet Union really helped the poor. Look how many of them it made. <laughs> <laughs> or just say, I'm not going to fix the problem. If there's somebody I know, I might fix that tiny little problem. No one person is going to fix the problem because no one pers person possibly can have the ability to fix the problem. I disagree. And the way to fix the problem is freedom. I agree. I think I should be up there with you. <laughs> yeah, come on up here. Back up here. You're over five words. Yeah. Yes. Are you over five beers? No, <laughs> this is still my first beer that Jim got for me. Good man. There's a problem out there. Now, big secret, don't tell anybody this. I actually sold insurance for a little while. And there are people who have $20,000 bills for prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. They're looking for help. Right or wrong, they turn to the government for that help. Now, if you want to sell... No government. You have to come up with a replacement for that. Now, you've already said you personally are going to do nothing. That's okay. You know, I'm a libertarian. Your life, your way, as far as I'm concerned. But I disagree with your statement that one person can't do anything. You go oh, tell not anything. Can't fix can't, the whole can't, problem. Can't fix the whole problem. I, I disagree with that. Okay. Go, go tell Rosa Parks one person can't fix something. What I'm looking for, I'm looking for an answer. What can we take to people to say, this is going to solve your problem. And just by saying, I'm going to do nothing, or one person can't do anything, if one person can come up with a new system, not one that, not a Soviet system, not a forcing system, but an open system, one where you can choose to participate or not, how can you say that doesn't exist? What I would say is the, to propose a solution, like in a, in a free society, you can say, I have an idea for feeding for it goes like this. Yes. But guess what? Nobody has to pay attention to you. Yes. A million people might say, that's a great idea, let's do that. That's a million individuals saying, I could help this problem, including the one who says, here's my idea. So we agree. But on that, yeah, okay. But the idea that you could guarantee that, you can't. You can say, I have this great idea. If nobody follows it, it's not going to do anything. I'm not going to work guarantee. Right. But what people want from status solutions, despite the fact that they never work, is a guarantee. I never offer a status solution. I know, I know. I'm, I'm not saying you. You're not arguing with me. Somebody no. else should be out there. He's talking to somebody else. I want to, well, when you're done answering him, I want to ask him a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then you can come here and be up. The, the status solution, the status pretend to have guarantees. Not you. I'm not saying what you said. Thank you. So that when you say, you have to replace this with something, no, I don't. I don't have to give a guarantee of anything because nobody can give a guarantee of anything. I can say, we might do it this way. <laughs> I can say, we might do it this way, and you can say, we might do it that way. The problem is, if you, if you step away from the principle, which is they don't have the right to rule, and get into the field of, here's how you're going to be taken care of without them, I think you've already given up what actually matters, which is the moral issue. And I, I'm unabashedly nasty to people who receive stolen property, no matter how poor they are. I say... You don't have a right to have my money stolen. I agree. I hope you're taken care of. I agree. If they don't. But you don't deserve to have a guarantee that you will be taken care of before you stop accepting my stolen money. I agree with everything you're saying. What I want to know is, 
How's it going to work after we stop stealing from people? Well, you can, that's the thing is we can give suggestions and we can give predictions of how it will work, but what people want, when, when most people ask that, maybe not when you asked it, when most people ask that, they sure. mean, what guarantee can you give me that I will be taken care of? And the answer is not. It's called reality. There is no magical system that will guarantee that you'll be taken care of, that the planet won't be destroyed by a meteor, that we won't be invaded by Martians. Go down the list of all the nasty things that can go wrong. There is no guarantee. There are lots of ideas that are completely outside of the political realm of how human beings can interact and deal with the problems. I never mentioned guarantees. I know. So why are you arguing guarantees? Because that's what people want I'm when they say people. replace the... I'm Ken. <laughs> You're not people. Ken, what are, you, what are you doing to prevent old people from eating dog food? I, could, I was just at the Maryland Libertarian Party convention two weeks ago, and I spent an hour and a half answering that question. I spent 25 minutes doing the presentation, and when I said any questions, every hand in the room went up. So I'm not going to steal Larkin's time. I just wanted to put him in the position I want to be where, where most anarchists stand. Mm -hmm. I agree with them when they say that government is forced. I agree with them when they say that when he says that they shouldn't be putting people in cages. I agree with 99.99% of what the man is saying. What I don't see is what he's suggesting instead. And if I could be a little flip about it, if we did what you're suggesting, we'd have anarchy. <laughs> I have a yeah. question. Um, well, wait a minute. Get in line. Wait. Yeah. Oh, oh, Peter. I, Peter. I just wanted to. Yeah, I, what you, the discussion that you two are having is, is a discussion that I've participated in, but it usually doesn't go very far. And so I, I really want to get it to go farther in, in the future, maybe now. But So well, if you were ask, asking me the question, Ken, you asked to, to Larkin a minute ago, I, typically what I've come up with is, as, as the first answer is, well, I have some ideas, but what, what do you think? And, and try to engage in the discussion because I don't think there is one answer. I, just, I think what, what you're trying to do is we need, if, if we want to sell a free society, we have to sell it with something. That's right. And, if you're and not going to have seniors eating dog food, food how are you going to do it? Right now you're saying somehow. Oh, Jim will take care of that. Just like Jim bought me my beer. Thank you, Jim. I'm out, by the way. I'm feeding old people. Internet question. From George Darwin. Oh, yeah. a voluntarist. Yes, uh, I just missed it. Don't. Um, give me just a second. Well, let Peter jump in there, then. Peter, you come up George here. George Darwin. I'm just looking at... <laughs> George Donnelly, Ken, how can government solve problems it itself creates and refuses to acknowledge? I have no idea. I'm not part of the government. My question had nothing to do with government. The question is, if government is not creating and solving problems, how do the, those pro some of those problems will still exist, because not all of them are created by government. Like I said, when I was selling insurance, I ran into this poor woman. She's spending $20,000 a year on medications. Some of them are psychoactive medications, so I'm not sure who would want to run around without them. <laughs> what, if I'm, I'm running for office, what am I going to tell her? If he's trying to sell his anarchy, what's he going to tell her? He's already said, too bad, how do you on your own? Uh, I, I don't accept that. that. And, I, and I think George has changed the subject by saying, well, what would government do? That's not my question. Here's my slightly mean analogy. When you say, if government isn't doing these things, what will you replace it with? I think... Well, how will the problem get solved? How will the problem get solved? It's not getting solved now. I don't want this to be to sound mean, but that is exactly equivalent to saying, if there's no such thing as Santa Claus, how do we make sure all the kids get, get, get toys? But there's an answer for that question. The answer is, there's no such thing as Santa Claus, sure there whether is. or not the kids get Santa, toys. Santa Claus is a gestalt human being. He's made up of all of us, and we participate as Santa Claus as much or as little as we want. Yeah, and, and that's the same thing. thing that we'll get. Get. That's right, and that's the same thing that we have that we need with society. But you can't you can't replace a mythical entity with anything. All you can do is get that it's mythical and then act like human beings. You're, change, you're changing the subject again. I don't care if it's mythical or not. I want to know what your solution is. And right now you say you don't have a solution. There's not a solution to Santa Claus. Like, I don't have to describe how every kid is going to get a toy in order to face. demonstrate that Santa Claus isn't real. Government isn't real. Whether right. or not, you're right. Before I, get taken. Like I said, I agree with you 99.9%. I want to know what comes next. All right, I, 
we've agreed. Everybody wakes up one morning and says, government should be gone. Ken Larkin. Not it should be gone. It never Larkin. was. It never was. There's a difference. And people realize that, and now... Now we act like human beings. Now what happens. Okay. It's my answer. We don't know. We, we don't know. We'll see. For an answer, uh, to give you an answer, a longer answer, you should read my forthcoming book called Atlas Snubbed. It's a parody of Atlas Shrugged, and it has my solution. Well, my I, only point is, whatever, that, whatever you're doing, that's exactly what would happen without a government. Exactly. So, and that's my point. Answer, I, I knew that I had my was, answer. I would if say, your answer was nothing, then nothing would get done. No, something will get done. That's something. Sorry, right, I got my answer. Thank you, sir. Okay. And thank you for being here. Uh, if, if we were to abolish carjacking, what would be your solution for carjacking? <laughs> yeah, we need it. We need a, some sort of system where the carjackers would be given cars that were, you know, in proportion to how much they need. Because, yeah, exactly. You don't you don't replace violence with anything. You don't replace Santa Claus with anything. If people live like people, like we own ourselves. I don't know what all happened. I couldn't possibly predict. I couldn't possibly suggest. Neither could anybody else in the world. I might have some dumb little ideas. It's a safe bet that a million other people will have better ideas than mine. The thing is, what's the foundation you're starting from? Is the foundation you're starting from, how will we have Santa Claus solve this, or how do we as human beings solve it? If you start from how do we as human beings start, solve it, you're in really good shape. If you look to a mythical entity called government to, to solve it, you do. And the thing that people want, not saying Ken wants it, but what people are so used to hearing and so much want is to hear a centralized plan that will, it will take care of the poor. It will protect us from foreign invaders. It will do this. It will do that. It will do the other thing. And what they don't want to accept is there's no such entity. If you're not going to do it yourself and all your neighbors are, aren't going to do it, it's not going to happen. It's called reality. There is no guarantee. There is no magical power that will come along and save us all from reality.